Go greetings, I am Lies and I use she her. And I am Scandal and I use they them. And let's play a game together, yes! Yay. So we are in Muriel's hut and suddenly I'm just like looking at her posture and like I know the words don't like collaborate at all but her just being like, she looks a little bit disgusted like just <laughs> judging your house real hard. Hmm, <laughs> how would I, quite a... Mm. <laughs> an experience. An really. experience. And I'm also just picturing the bottom of her entire beautiful dress just covered with mud like six to eight inches up. Yep, like, it's fine. forest floor kind of experience mm. and just going, hmm, there you go. Depression. That's all right. right. Um, yes. Vesuvia is a bit of a work in progress. I also could see how the line of him basically going, the city is more dangerous, going over her head in reference to direct things, but also her taking it really personally and going, you're right, I'm not doing enough there, it's not good enough yet, I'm not finished. Her perfectionism just kicking in. Mm -hmm. And so just totally going, yes, I agree with you. Damn it, me, why haven't you done this yet? Curse me and my slowness! Yes. Curse me and my, my, Gorgeousness! Ha, huh, damn oh. it. Whoa! No, I'm, I'm <laughs> kidding, not that she'd do that, I'm just... Are you entirely self-sufficient? Then, she does sound like she's desperately scrambling for conversation. With every question, Muriel's glances grow less suspicious, his shoulders relaxing every so slightly. Whoops. Ever so slightly. Ever. Every so- his shoulders relaxing every so slightly. Every so slightly. Every so slightly. It typos. Why don't you like me? Normalize typos. It's okay, it happens. But also get proofreaders, lots of them. Yes. Lots of proofreaders. Please. <laughs> <clears throat> Ever also, so slightly. why are these questions relaxing him, I wonder? I don't understand, because my impression was Muriel of he's a suspicious character who doesn't trust people. More questions is just more invasion. I was gonna say, also- Unless he's like, again, what I, I have suspected is that Muriel is a Sunberry. <laughs> Oh my God. Basically going, also that thing of going like, I'm not interested, no, not at all, I'll shove you away, mm -mm, go away, leave. But, like, if you keep bothering me, you keep pushing my space, I like it. I um, like it, maybe, perhaps. I really am possibly. lonely. I'm very lonely! Well, no, don't talk to me! But I'm not really lonely, no, I'm not, just I'm out better. here. I'm an island. I'm not, I'm not necessarily saying that he'd be like, you're better than me, but I am really like, there is this weird thing with Muriel that I can't quite, like, because, like, yeah. I, and I, I appreciate if that's somebody's character type, but, like, I suppose I take this as, like, why? See, and for me, I wasn't really thinking, um, like, basically, uh, Sundari, if you will, because I don't know him as well as you do. I, you, you know him better than I. I was oh, say, what, the impression I was getting is that he is anti-social. So it's not only that he's suspicious and doesn't trust people, but it's like, I don't like social interaction. At all. I don't want you to talk to me. And the impression I got when, like, um, Julian was there was really just, I don't want to be interacted with at, at all. all. Yeah. And so it's not like, I'm suspicious of you, but now you're proving that you're not a threat. Mm -hmm. It's more like, I just don't want you here, please go. But yeah. this is giving a different idea than that, so I'm like, oh, I'm okay. All right, all right. All right. every so slightly. Every so ever so slightly. There's still tension in the air, but Nadia is doing a wonderful job of easing it. Roles, leadership skills. Roles a 20. Muriel, I don't know why, but I'm more relaxed. Honestly, though, I think, again, he'd find that to be really suspicious. If he's been abused before, as we've talked about, like, mm -hmm. with him in the Colosseum, that we learned from the last one, I don't know why he'd be relaxed with the royalty. The weird thing is, is, okay... If we had played this route first, we'd know nothing about the Colosseum right now. Yeah. But knowing about the Colosseum, wasn't he there while Nadia was married to Lucio? Yes. Wouldn't he know exactly who she is yes. and have her be directly attached to that? Yes. So why isn't he, like, real uncomfortable with her? Like, you cannot ease me. You were connected to... And a lot of people... And I don't... It, this doesn't necessarily, like, guarantee it's in this fictional world. But in real life, when people are a couple... Whether they are dating or married um, or just, you know, together, a lot of people tend to think that they are, they both completely endorse each other. Yes. Like, for every d dating situation that I've been in, it's like, you, of course, approve of and endorse everything your boyfriend does. Yes. And vice versa. Or if I ask one of you something, you know, and they, you can, each of you can answer for both of you. Yes. And there's this, this habit of treating a couple as a unit. You are a single person with one idea and two heads. Right. And the thing is, is or two bodies, even. As you say, and the thing is, is going... I don't see why he would be comfortable with Nadia at all in reference to she would seem to be endorsing and supporting Lucha. That's why I said if his comment had anything to do with nobility and her completely goddamn missing it, because she's also been unconscious, basically, for three years. Well, she forgot. No, no, but I mean, like, she has three years, just nothing. That she doesn't remember, yes. Yeah, so, like, she has nothing, and he's like, 
I know exactly who the fuck you are. And it's really weird that you don't act like you know me. Exactly. That'd be him going, I am. And that wouldn't me, me be, like, I wouldn't see him as relaxing under those cases. I'd see him as going, this is really strange. Like, imagine that the wife of your, you know, enslaver and oppressor just shows up at your house in the rain after you've secluded yourself from society. Mm -hmm. And then doesn't respond to you as if they recognize you at all. And then tries to make polite conversation without feeling awkward on their side. Like, they're not masking or hiding anything. Now, again, we do know also, though, that Muriel's power, whatever he has, causes people to forget. However, that doesn't take away his discomfort. Because the thing is, is you can have people going, I saw you do a horrible thing. I know who you are as a celebrity, but you never met me, whom you actually personally hurt, but you didn't connect to my situation at all like there's been those situations and you have people going i'm horrified by you but you have no idea who i am and the only safety i have is that i know you don't know who i am yes okay so the 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 reaction wouldn't be weird because i forgot that he makes people forget but i think he would still be uncomfortable him reacting going i'll be more calm pisses me off like that doesn't make character wise that doesn't make any sense to me all right, wonderful job of using it. But somehow. we also don't have all the knowledge of why this is going on. Maybe Nadia really is just like she wasn't really active at all. Maybe she Maybe never went to the Colosseum. Maybe. And um, that seems weird for Lucio. I think he'd be like, let's drag everything here and go, look at this gorgeous show that I put on, baby. What's up? I also get yeah, the impression. Yeah, baby. Yeah. I also get the impression. Do I make you horny? If I'm going to have a trophy wife, a decorative wife, or, you know, a wife that gives me prestige in any way, I want to show off the shit I've got to her and show her off to everyone else. Right. Like, I want to go around and be a power couple because that's a thing that seems like he would find valuable. Yeah. So she totally should have seen all of his possessions, including his people possessions, which kind of makes me uncomfortable to say that. I How many people did he own, question mark? I mean... How many slaves did he have? I'm also kind of wondering how many slaves the Procrean Empire itself has, because on average, throughout our own history, pretty much every empire that I've usually heard about has slaves. So if like, I, I was say, well, if I understand correctly, he wasn't a part of Vesuvia at all until he married Nadia, or did he have the castle already? I think like Draconishi at one point said that like he was given the count experience. I don't actually really know. Like I thought that he was like, already. He was already Count and she came there to marry him. Yeah. Okay, so he he could have owned Muriel before that, but I'd like a timeline, though. That would be neat. Yeah, that would be really useful. All right. <clears throat> Wonderful job of using it. Wonderful job. She's a natural at this. This should make him deeply uncomfortable. But I don't know that as the MC, so it's okay. Yeah, Connor's also, would have no goddamn idea. your MC could be misreading the situation. Perhaps he's trying to... I feel like Muriel is too much of a... My wear, my heart on my sleeve, which is why I'm a dark and broody, because otherwise, like... Everyone will know my feelings. Okay, okay, but like, get, get, hear me out for a second. Okay, go ahead. Your MC is a three-year-old. They're they're brilliant three-year-olds because they they're okay. sort of like magically mature as far as like knowledge and like communication skills, but like emotionally and into like like experience-wise, mm-hmm. they only have three years, right? Yeah, that's and right. so they're they're very very young person socially, right? Right. So they might not be great at reading social cues, especially since Astra is continually confounding, right? Mm-hmm. So. Nadia, uh, so, so basically Nadia's going, I'm trying to placate you, and Muriel, being an intelligent person... Rec- not a real prophecy! Astra's not speaking in rhyme. Oh god. <laughs> okay, and so Muriel recognizes this, and trying to basically please or placate her in return, pantomimes, I'm relaxing. Does that make sense? Right. And then Corazon doesn't realize that he's acting, and so just goes, oh, it's working. Right. What do you think of that? I mean, it's also possible that, like, he's done a lot of conceal, don't feel anyway, because it seems like possibly from his other route, which is the only other exposure we really have, is that he was a lot like, I shut down Mm -hmm. a lot, so I don't know. Ah, how lovely to be so isolated. But he's also incredibly fucking socially awkward. This is the dude that hid in the original freaking... uh, And hid behind like a lamppost and a dog. Yeah, yeah, and you're like... So he shouldn't be very good at acting emotionally. At all! He's really bad! Unless more in his element, he is more better at it. Go... So, so, hear me out for a second. Home invasion? No, no, no. no. Hang on. 
A lot of times when people are in their power center, in their place of comfort, even if people are coming and invading it, they have more familiarity there, therefore more energy, more focus. More spoons. More spoons. Yeah. So being out doing a big fucking social thing, like I'm trying to fucking buy something at the market, I'm already exhausted, overwhelmed, confused, and stressed, and overstimulated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I try to hide behind a fucking dog because I'm just trying to think of anything. Mm -hmm. And when I'm at my house where people just show up in the rain when I was having a cozy, pleasant evening, yeah, it's a surprise, but I was really well charged and comfortable. Okay, that's good. Yeah. I can see. All right. <clears throat> oh, how lovely to be so isolated. Free of all of my problems and all of my sisters and all of my burdens, all of my husband. It is amazing. interesting, actually, how much, like, Nadia's thing of running away, like, she does have a similar theme, like, where Julian was literally trying to escape all of his so, issues, and you spent all of your time in that route, it felt like, trying to convince him, going, Hi! Stop running from your problems! Acknowledge that other people get hurt and they're involved in your life, Edgelord! Come on! And what I'm getting from Nadia is that she profoundly wishes for escapism, but generally won't allow herself to do it. Mm -hmm. But that she really does, like, mentally go, Oh, God, it would be so nice to just quit all of this and never have to look at any of it ever again. Burn it with fire. Mm -hmm. Like, going, No, I'm obligated. And I've been in so many situations where it's, Oh, no, I'm obligated. I'll make myself do it. And I'm like, I am so sorry you feel that way. And, uh, alas. Be so isolated. It is, it's quite admirable. What you have done out here. Um, not many have the skills to make it alone. Or live under these conditions. I'm also Jack like, what is making it look like then to you, Nadia? Well, he's not dead yet. You don't know if he has an infection where you can't see. You don't know, you what don't know if he's, what his health is like, say, actually. You Just don't... because he's ripped doesn't mean Jack squat, say, actually. You don't know what his teeth are like. Oh, God, yeah. So a lot of people have talked about um, if you are someone who has like, um, been, been, like, if you are roughing it, and you do not have dental care, but you have grown up in a society with like refined foods and refined grains, stuff like bread and things like that, mm -hmm. um, eating those kinds of foods that your teeth need different care. Mm -hmm. And so you're generally going to have more tooth problems. Now, if he's moved to a fully natural diet with no real sugar in it, mm -hmm. then his teeth could last a really, really long time. However, in that situation, you could also grind your teeth down. I was going to say, faster. but one of the things they've talked about is going, if you eat the really tough, unrefined foods, our teeth aren't generally designed to handle that, mm -hmm. which is why a lot of cultures process their foods with, you know, stone or other things, mm -hmm. um, or, or cooking methods or stuff like that. Because, yeah, if you're just eating, like, raw nuts and things like that, you really do grind your teeth down the way elephants do, and you lose them. Yeah. All right. To make it alone. This sounds like one of those things where you look at someone who has handled the... Who's, held a conversation with you and going, well, you turned out all right. And you're yeah. like, the only thing you know about me is that I'm able to have a two-minute conversation like and that I'm here out in the world. Mm -hmm. That's the only knowledge you have. Yeah, that doesn't mean jack squat. Mm -hmm. I'm lucky I got out of bed this morning. Do you gather your own food? You're lucky to make it on your own. If he doesn't gather his own food, how the heck would he survive on his own? <laughs> it's fine. I'm fine. I love the, okay, so I love the royalty narrative of this, of going... Wow, but you make any tourism, you mean? That, but also just going the, oh, you've gone back to nature, you've gone back to the woods, you've gone back to home How study charming. And, a, and a very organic way of life, back to the original sense of things, and then going, do you gather your own food? Oh my god, how quaint! And yeah. going, is that a, a thing? Right. Here you are. The conversation fades out as my attention drifts. Looking around the humble hut, we disassociate madly, because why would your attention necessarily... Like, I th that feels silly for Corazon, but that's fine. It's Something is calling to me from the far wall, tugging at me insistently. Okay, if your attention drifts because there's a magic thing going... That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Going, Corazon, I am here paying attention, doing the job I was hired for. And then your entire half of your whole brain is going tug, 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 and you're feeling like, wait, hang on, what? What? Mm -hmm. I mean, I can see that, but also like but I imagine really... that like Asher's shop does some of that, or you're just really going like, especially after I walked down the Salem witch trial path, basically, you know, and and we went with, with with I don't remember the, the name Blair of Witch Path. The Blair Witch one, Project. One. Thank you. Path. I kept trying to remember what the name of that damn movie was. I haven't. So the Blair Witch Project path, and we're going. There's already magic around. Mm -hmm. I'm used to Azra's shop for a really long time. That was really only a couple of days ago, and I'm specifically supposed to be here for magic. Why would that rip my attention away where I can't pay attention also, to the conversation? Also, going, this thing is actively tugging at me doesn't sound like drifting. No. So, and the, t the two of those are a little bit contradictory for me. My attention drifts away. Like, imagine a dog shoving its head into your hand. 
your attention doesn't drift away from what you're doing. You go, oh, a thing. Your attention snaps to uh-huh. whatever's going on. Because so if it's, especially if it's unexpected and it taps you, you go, huh, Like what? if it's tugging at you, like your sleeve or like, at a, you know, like a small child tugging at your garment kind uh-huh. of thing. Or whatever, yeah. It's like it tugs gently at your nose ring, whatever it is. Oh, God. I try to ignore the call and refocus on the conversation, but I can't. Before I know it, my feet are moving, taking me closer. Across the space that is so small it only requires three steps to get there. Yep. There's a small bear figurine set in an alcove in the wall. Its face is worn from age, paint faded around the edges. I'm going to have to say... That the art does not agree with you. That's a shelf, not an alcove. I'm also like, that's where the bowl is in the alcove yeah, the bowl. against the wall. That is a shelf next to a root where that has the bear on it. Yes. You, one of you is on a shelf. The other one's on an, in an alcove. In, in a shelf that could be called an alcove. Yes. So, no. So, but I, that's okay. I also love the fact that he painted it. And so I'm going, do you have paint out here? Do you make your own paint? I, w- I could see that. That happens a lot. Do you gather your own food? Of course, do you make your own paint? Do do you make your own paint? Mm. I am interested because there are many things I like to color. Mm, oh, including mm. me. Yes. <clears throat> paint faded around the edges. It's touched with magic. Familiar and soft. Asra's magic. Question. I have a question. Yes. So, how does Corazon know that they're recognizing Asra's magic if they've never met anyone else's magic ever? If you have no contrast. And like... You can still recognize, like, this tastes like my mom's cooking kind of thing, mm-hmm. if you have no contrast, but, like, would you go, this is my mom's cooking mm-hmm. kind of thing? It's also, like, your character is, despite the fact that they seem to live in a magical world, there is no notation or going, like, I recognize this magic as I go outside that it belongs to this person over here. There's not a lot mm-hmm. of that particular text. Now, I understand that some of it might be, oh, we're not, we're trying to not, you know, decide your experience for you but i find that to be very silly or we're trying not to muddy the story with extra information but i was just kind of wondering that of feeling i recognize astra's magic everywhere and occasionally i might recognize other presences other tugs other things but i never recognize magic done by someone else Mm -hmm. you know and i think that's interesting right anyway what are you doing don't touch that Muriel's suddenly in front of me, gently plucking the bear from my hands and quickly backing away. Oh, did we pick it up? We apparently did. Okay, that happened. I, for some reason. You could you could just be, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I get out. He turns into the beast. Get out! <laughs> Sometimes I've actually kind of wondered if that wasn't like part of the inspiration for the character was just going Disney's movie. Beast. Get out! Yeah. Yes, Disney's Beast. Mm-hmm. Everything is destroyed in this room. He's been, you know, clawing at the picture frames and such <laughs> like that. Oh, silence, except for him carrying his whip. The storm is raging. Sorry. <clears throat> mm-hmm. But making no sound. I know. It's fine. I hear nothing but his whittling as it's raging outside. Oh, yes, whittling. Mm-hmm. I'm just like... I love whittling. And that's great. Maybe his sound is super... His hat is super soundproof, despite it being incredibly open to the elements. Yay. Magically, but we also don't recognize the magic because it's not as... I know! It's okay. fine. The storm is still raging. Surely we can work this out. The door blows open. Even though he locked the fucking door and there was a latch... It's fine. It broke the door. It it breaks the latch to boil it open. So it shatters broke, the latch. The lo- latch slash lock on his door is now busted. Yes. Okay. The door blows open, letting in a gust of wind and rain, revealing and revealing and revealing a figure emerging from the darkness. The door bursts open, shattering the wood latch everywhere. Splinters fly as it swings in. Except that that says that basically somebody opened the door. Somebody on the other side cast Alohomora. I because be. it latches from the inside, as mm-hmm. far as I can tell. It does. Because he latched it after he brought you in. But of course, so then that doesn't make but any he sense. Because how does he leave? It. He locked it. Well, he doesn't lock it when he leaves. Because oh, yeah. obviously, like, Huli and, and Nerd were able to get in without it being locked. That's true. So he only locks it when he's inside. He doesn't care if any... You don't, he doesn't have to worry about anyone invading his space when he's not there, because he's not there. Okay, He just I wants them that. away from him. Okay, that would actually be an interesting bit of character. But again, that's the thing. I'm like, why would you be okay then with people asking you questions? Like, it's fine, whatever. Revealing okay. a figure emerging from the darkness. Is it dark? I... Wasn't it daytime? Do we mean the dimness of outside, the storm? Or is the storm it nighttime raging now? outside? I have no idea. Okay, darkness. I anyway, have no idea. It's dark outside. Well, 
Do you see his like, surprise? Is he soaking wet? I, I need to know. Astra with an umbrella. Well, do you, you see, see that surprise? That has a little thing over his head. Mm hmm. Why does he not have his hat? His traveling hat seems like... I was like, like his looking... cloak should really be up. Also, we get an image of his pants here. That's Ah, <gasps> okay. Pants suit! Look at the, like, um... like The buttons? There are the buttons or, like, studs in the pants. Those are fun. I never noticed those before. Does Asper actually have pants or does it have skirt? I think it's pants, but I'm not sure. I, I think the skirt would be cute. I haven't spent much time looking at his sprite. To be honest. Yes. To be honest. I think I've seen it, and it is definitely, like, pants canonically, but I'm also like, I think it would be cute if it was a skirt. Honestly, a skirt is extremely practical for traveling more than pants. Also, skirts basically, or wraps, were very common for a lot of basically Skirts and men. wraps were the fashion around the world until basically horseback riding was invented. Mm hmm But even then, a lot of people had that, because what you had is you had a wrap and then you had pants. I was to say, what I'm saying is, from what I understand of fashion history, pants were invented for horseback riding and then became more fashionable. Okay. Like, more up and moved in as a fashion of, that's a cool thing to do with your legs. Oh, that's fair. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, and, and moved into other pieces of culture, because the easiest thing to make, like, hence, you know, Greek or whatever, is just a square of cloth and hang it on yourself. Put a bed sheet on yourself. You look gorgeous. Uh-huh. If you sheets... ever feel bad, imagine basically that's all the Romans and the Greeks were doing was just wearing bed sheets. They really were. Honey, like... you look great today. Just so you know, you look in your mirror, you're going to look fabulous. Additionally, a lot of your African fabric culture. Big, beautiful bed sheets that just wrap around the head, wrap around the body. Uh-huh. They're just huge swaths of square or rectangular clothing. Uh -huh. Same thing with saris. Yeah, absolutely. Like around the world, men and women, historically for fashion, skirts and dresses were the thing. Yeah. Like that's it. Making pants is far more complicated than making a skirt. It is, actually. Mm. Astra, what an interesting surprise to see you here. I... Nadia gives him a suspicious look, rising from the table and slowly walking over. Muriel has shrunk back to the bed, gripping the bear figurine tightly in his hands. He is like a small child hiding behind the bear figure, but also trying to hide it at the same time. Squeeze my baby. Not only do I try and hide it from everyone, but I'm also trying to sort of like sink into it and disappear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He fixes Astra with a long, unreadable look. Nadia? Corazon? Ah. Uh, uh... I really would like to know if Astra is soaking wet or if... He has avoided the rain magically somehow. Like, this is important to me. Magical ma rain missing. Like, or, or <clears throat> like he had an umbrella, or he was wearing a waterproof cloak, or something. I want a hat to know. A hat. Large. His huge his brim. hat. But with a much larger brim. Poof. He's got the spell that just, you know, just like, you just like, you know, you, shift, you shift it a little bit, and it just turns into, like, umbrella hat. Uh-huh. Uh, beginning. I love that. The beginning. He just, like... Just like tweaks a tiny charm on the hat and it just begins uh -huh. <laughs> for rain. <laughs> I watch his eyes reflect a thousand different emotions before he quickly recovers and gives us a warm smile. A thousand emotions is a lot. Blah! Him Whoa. cries, sobs, screams, yells, uh, hollers, looks is sort of pensive, melancholic, sad, sentimental, is angry, goofy, furious, tired, feels congested, entertained, needs to fart, has constipation. <laughs> Those aren't emotions. Yeah, but that's an emotion, but like, I'm distressed. I'm in digestive distress. I don't like this. So he is distressed. He is furious. He is concerned. He is he is weary. He is overwhelmed. He I've, is excited. He's interested all at once. I've always giggled at that or thought he just where travels people through really do write that, and you're like, you have to watch all those expressions go across someone's face. Can you imagine how long you'd be there? On the other hand, like... <laughs> <laughs> you're like... <laughs> My whole face can... And I feel like it's one of those things where somebody just sort of pauses and they go, uh, and they process for a second. And that processing for one second, because you know them, you go, you just went through a whole lot of thinky thoughts. Uh -huh. And you call that a thousand emotions. Yes. That All right. <clears throat> I was in the neighborhood. What a coincidence. It's good to see you both. I say, Muriel, I resent you calling my lonesome hut by itself away from everyone, secluded to be secluded, and neighborhood. Damn it! How dare you include me in a community that's specifically what I do not want? None! None pizza left beef, okay? Yes. What are you doing here? Good to see you too. Okay, would Corazon go born into... Yep, I know exactly what's going on, or a... I think, oh, honestly, so why a, are you here? it would be way more of a sarcastic, it's good to see you too. I feel like too. I feel like it would be like, sarcastic. There is not a, oh, what yes. are you doing here? I'm going to be defensive. It's like, mm -hmm. let's just add one more thing on it. Also, we did just literally detect Astra's magic. So you're like, there's something 
There is something bullshitty going on. Here. We also know that absolutely you've done magic in this entire <clears throat> area and in this person's space. So, hello. Hi. Hi. Yep, it's go it's for inevitable. It. It's good to see you too. We've had a long day. Mm. Quite long. Though made shorter by Muriel's lovely hospitality. I say, trying to remind him not to throw us out. <laughs> I, I, I was just, lovely hospitality, Muriel. I, I do feel like that is a very weighted, thoughtful statement. Like I love you calling it out, but it uh -huh. really is a. It's one of those things where somebody is like, "I am shifting the mood," and you point out exactly what's valuable and important about what they've done that you like and want to continue doing. To someone else. Uh huh. And then the other person goes, "Oh, you're doing that thing," and they they are more socially obligated to do it. Basically, it's a it's a manipulative tactic. It is an underhanded way to get what you want. Yes, I have seen people actually use stuff like that to other people to basically control also conversations, and you're kind of like, yep. "Fuck you!" Right. Really? I, <clears throat> by Muriel's lovely hospitality, Muriel, shit, motherfucker. I mean, <laughs> dot, tiny dot, voice, shit. Dot, dot 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 in this case means shit, man. <laughs> Hospitality, huh? Chores don't like me, are you? I asked her <laughs> such a sarcastic shit. <laughs> Absolutely. Exactly. Muriel. Excuse you? Betrayer. First you put me in a neighborhood, and now you say I'm hospitable and Corazon. I, I feel you. And take care of guests? What kind of bullshit is this? Corazon, yes, he's always like He that. does this. Looks over at Muriel. Oh, look, it's dead. I understand you. Yeah, I get you we, now. In this moment, we are the same person. <laughs> <laughs> the two of you are acquaintances. Huh? You walk into Who? his hut without asking, and Who? you know exactly where it is, and you seem completely at home here, but you are acquainted with each other? Wow. That sounds I mean, really odd. The thing is, is like I think she is just playing like, wow. I think she is Amazing. too. I just think it's funny. You're yes. just going, let me just state the obvious to progress the situation so people don't like him Dwell or hide. Things. Going, ah. The two of you are acquainted. Or also sort of giving you an opportunity to say yes or no. Mm -hmm. So, anyway. How would you define this? So you've called, <clears throat> called him hospitable, neighborly, and a good host. <clears throat> um, and you know each other. What? You see, we are old friends. Hey, Asra, you are as young as a spring tulip. <clears throat> There's nothing old about you. <clears throat> what are the two of you doing here if not to visit Tremelio? Ah, mm, that would be my fault. I'm afraid. Oh, dear. Her. Whoa. And I can't tell because the look on her face, like, it doesn't look embarrassed or ashamed or surprised. It looks really like, oh dear, that would be my fault, you know? Oh, I'm so sorry. So that's the whole blushing I'll thing combined. I'll take the fall for this, but I'm, you know, like being said, diplomatic, basically. The blushing thing combined with the expression. I'd like her to have more of that sort of concerned expression rather than the, ooh, side eye expression, if you will. Yeah. Um, For this one where it kind of looks like, ah, that would be my fault, I'm afraid. Yeah. Sort of, it looks a little playful. See, or this one works well with blushing, going, I'm embarrassed, but I'm also grumpy. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. We had a little accident on our way to another destination. A small, tiny little accident. I itty bitty destination. Not very big at all. I mean, the destination is non-consequential. It's just the accident we're talking about. Mm, absolutely. Muriel here was kind enough, rubs it in further, that he needs to continue offering hospitality. He was a good boy, smear, smear, smear. To offer us his home for shelter. He offered it. Him bursting through the door, running down the path. I hear your carriage has crashed with my amazing and well-tuned nature familiar ears. You need help. I invite you, you. Can I invite you on my abs? I will invite you to be carried by me to my and my home. strong arms. And, and you can stay with me until the storm abates. Uh, you can look upon me at the same time if you wish. Offering us his home for shelter for the storm that beset us. Him. You pounded on my door and yelled at me. That's me offering you my home? Yes. Mary, I'm going, I have never been offended so many times in such a short space of, of like, in such, such a short amount of time my entire life. Mm. Like seven rounds of offense, of offense, now just going, eh, eh, eh. <laughs> you're all misrepresenting me, but only for our own benefit. That's okay. Uh, yes. And uh, now Astra is here. So you can leave. Get that fuck out. Because if Astra is here and he's dry, clearly he can keep you dry out there without me. Bye. 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 <gasps> Muriel, it's still raining. They can't leave yet. Humans can't go out in the rain, Muriel. They melt. <laughs> Muriel, what? <laughs> what? 
Meryl! Damn, I forgot! <laughs> or royalty can't go out in the rain. rain. They melt. melt him. Do they? With Lucio melt in the rain? Oh. Rain, excuse me, wait, what? That's amazing. <clears throat> Besides, you know what's out there, right? <laughs> Muriel scoffs and picks the stick back up. He resumes carving once more, and though the stick is nearly whittled down, though the stick is nearly whittled down to nothing, he's got I... a hem and haw at his stick again. No, 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 I know. I need to say something. Go ahead. Cradling the bear, cuddling the bear, holding the bear. Does he have it tucked under his uh, sh- like elbow while he carves? He sticks it in his armpit. <laughs> this is how much it's precious. Pink. And now he you sticks know... it in between his tits. And... <laughs> well, the thing is, is, without any support, it wouldn't stay. So you know. No, but, like you know that thing. <laughs> Where you're holding like either like um, a book or a handbag or something sort of flat, and you just put it under your arm uh-huh. and oh, put your arm down, so you can a- use both of your hands. If he didn't set it down somewhere, since it has been the object of focus, he stuck it in his groin. I, did he just his put lap? it in his lap? Like, where's the bear? It's the only thing Corazon <clears throat> has been narrating things around for a little while. Uh-huh. I want to know where it is if his hands are suddenly not holding it. Well, you know what? It doesn't matter. No, why not? Because he can whittle it down to nothing as much as he wants. Because we are out of time. He'll whittle it in the next one. <laughs> so, hey, baby. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's, it's a new dance. It's the whittle. <laughs> Would you like... <laughs> it's that just do the little carving motion. So pretend like hands. you're holding something in your hand. Take your other hand and then carve up and down a broad sweeping motion. And just move your whole Isn't body like left to doing right. Doing like the barber show, oh, like the, sh- the, the shaving, the shaving one. Yeah. Yeah. To like uh, clean your knife or what is it? It's like... So you'd have to do it a little bit differently. Maybe you do the lathe and you pretend like it's a whole like like a lathe experience. I don't know, but we're out of time. Anyway, so thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. If you like what we do, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and also share our videos. If you are having a good time with us, please also feel free to go check out our Ko-Fi and our Patreon. We have some links in the description down below. We do. We also have a Twitch. We also have a Twitter. We also have an Instagram, and we also have a Tumblr, so feel free to check us out there as well. And uh, I have been Scandal. And if you do want to join us live streaming on Twitch, we would love to see you there. And I have been lies. (gasps) And And it was was great great playing playing with you. you. Bye. Bye!